Kawhi going to be the one that stands in the way of the Lakers making it to a championship once again? Oh, I hesitate to answer this question because I know what's coming. So I'm going to give my answer, and then I'm going to lay out for a while. And then I'm coming back at you, okay. Stephen A. Okay. Let me just say the answer to the question, does Kawhi have the best shot to stop LeBron, is no. What? The floor is yours. What? <laughs> really? Oh, you know something, Max? Max Kellerman is hilarious. Let me get this straight. The best player in the world. Kawhi Leonard, your guy. The guy that's the best player in the world, Stephen A. Tell me, please, he's the man. It's not LeBron. He's not the king. That dude, Kawhi Leonard, who led the Clippers. That's right. Go hide, Max. Wait a minute. Let me put an APB out for Max Kellerman. Where the hell is he? Wait a get, get your behind back here. Don't hide now. You got to be kidding me. Excuse me, Kawhi Leonard, who just got Serge Ibaka, who still has Paul George. He's got Ty Lue as a new coach. That's right. Show that face, Max Kellerman. Show that face. You got to be kidding me. You're going to sit up here with a straight face? I don't even give a damn about what your answer is. That's right. Ooh. <laughs> I can't believe him. I can't believe you actually sat there with a straight face and said not Kawhi Leonard. Not Kawhi Leonard. The season hasn't started yet. Preseason hasn't started yet. The Clippers lost a 3-1 lead. They're highly motivated. Kawhi's got something to prove. Ty loses new coach. Paul George got to show that he ain't going to hit the side of backboards from three-point range. And I love Paul George, so I don't like getting on him. Reggie Jackson has been retained. Patrick Beverly is still there. Serge Ibaka has replaced Montrell's Herald. You're trying to tell me that you don't believe that Kawhi Leonard, your dude, the number one player in the world, the two-time champion, the two-time finals MVP, that dude does not have the, he's not the favorite to knock off LeBron. I didn't even sit up there and ask you, is he going to knock off LeBron? I said, should he be the favorite? And your answer is no, Max Kellerman? No? Really? Really? You said something just now that explains why. You said you like Paul George. You don't want to get on him. That's the reason. If it was Kawhi on a team built that has a similar strength to the Lakers, that's one thing. It is not. Because his second banana, Paul George, goes away in the playoffs. Stephen A., I, Kawhi needs all the extra credit to be considered better than LeBron. I thought he was going to get it. I thought he was Mr. Se Game 7, fourth quarter. I seen it. He didn't. He wasn't that this last season. And if mm -hmm. he doesn't have that going for him, the clutch thing going for him, I can't put him ahead of LeBron, who just, who's better than everyone else, right? But I thought... Kawhi is a two-way player, plus when you need it most, given his age, everything. I was proven wrong when he went away in the fourth quarter against Denver in the playoffs. However, Kawhi is a beast. Kawhi actually had a great playoffs. Kawhi was the reigning finals MVP heading into the season, his second finals MVP. He's a great player in his prime. If he had another player of his caliber like LeBron does on his team and the proper role players around him I would pick Kawhi to win he doesn't he doesn't you if you're second banana they have two superstars on the team only it's really only one superstar and one star who are always waiting to become a superstar but he doesn't do it you brought up hit the side of the rip had the side of the backboard in game, in game seven, right, in the fourth quarter. Side of the backboard. He's so off, he loses confidence in the moment of truth. How can I say that Kawhi got the best chance? Put Kawhi with another dude like him, the way LeBron's with AD. And then, mm -hmm. sure, by the way, Stephen A., even bring in Chris Paul switch teams, right? Bring in a Chris Paul. Mm -hmm. Bring in a dynamic playmaker to make the offense cohesive. I still would have picked the Clippers. They didn't. I can't. So, 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 so just a question, man. So, it's... It's Paul George's fault that Kawhi Leonard isn't the kind of leader that can galvanize troops. It's Paul George's fault that Kawhi Leonard is superstar, as much of a superstar player as he is, walks around with such an indifferent mentality, all about making sure he handles his business as an individual, but doesn't necessarily maximize the potential around him. That's Paul George's fault. Was it Paul George's fault that Kawhi Leonard shot 6 of 22 from the field? and scored 14 points in a game seven after losing a 3-1 lead. But Jamal Murray had 40? That, that, that's Paul George's fault, too? I thought that Kawhi was the elite 
defender. I thought that he was the best player in the world. I thought that he was the ultimate leader. That's what you said. That's what you said. Now, I know you said oops. I do. I understand that. I didn't say I, that, man. The I know you leader. said oops. I know you said oops. I think it would have been appropriate. Matter of fact, I got another beef with you, Max. And you know what the other beef with you is? I thought it was an exceptional thing that Bring you it. did right now, just hiding out of the camera. That's what you should have did after they lost game seven. My only beef with you is, why didn't you do it then? <laughs> what you doing? What you save it for this morning well, for? Well, I might be slow, but Where I'm was not that stupid. Max Kellerman from this morning that was hiding from the camera, hiding away from the camera? Where was that Max Kellerman after game seven when Kawhi Leonard shot six of 22, finished with 14 points, <laughs> let Jamal Murray drop 40, damn near average 40 for the series, and oh, by the way, all Max had was a oops. You should have been hiding from the camera. That day. Right. That's my beef. Nah. nah. Nah, look, here's the <laughs> bottom line. Kawhi had a bad game seven. He's had very oh, few man. bad clutch performances in his career, and he's had more clutch performances than almost anyone. Like, whoever lived. Like, you look at how many clutch performances Kawhi has had since he was a 22-year-old before he even knew what he was doing. He wasn't highly touted or anything like that. Since bored man gets paid out of college, just happy to be drafted and all that stuff, he is a very clutch player. Even clutch players have very bad nights. But he picked the wrong night to have a bad night. But what I'm saying is I don't expect a repeat of that from Kawhi. More often than not, he comes through. So then it becomes, what's his supporting cast like? I like Ibaka over Harrell. I think that's a, a marginal improvement, okay. right? But Stephen A., you and I both know they needed a point guard. It's just a position Kawhi plays. Kawhi can well, run well, your they offense wanted, okay. They, hold on. He's an above average passer at this point in his career for a small forward, but he's not right. They, Rondo or CP3 they wanted would have been Rondo, better. But, but, but they Atlanta offered them about $10 million more. They offered them about money, $10 million right? more. I get it. But, but we have to admit, the Clippers, if they got better, got marginally better in the offseason. Combining for 21 points in yesterday's preseason win over the Suns. Perk back here with us. Uh, Stephen A., starting with you, will you be worried, though, if the Lakers get off to a slow start? Not at all. Not even a little bit. Matter of fact, um, I, I, you know, I expect them to. I wouldn't mind if they do. I have no problem whatsoever. When we talk about load management, is 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 as much as I have been profoundly against that over the years. Um, it's with the exception is LeBron James. If LeBron James, for any reason, said, "You know what? I don't want to start playing until January," as a league, we should stand up and support him. Seriously, I mean, with the work that this man has put in, it doesn't bother me at all. And so. I know he's not going to do that. That's why he showed up there last night. He's going to be ready for opening night, at least to some capacity. Uh, but I think that if the Lakers do start off, I'm not concerned at all because not only are they great, they're experienced. So when you look at LeBron James, I think that this is one of the rare breeds that has graduated to the point where he doesn't even need to be questioned about anything that's taking place in the regular season. Everything about him should be measured by postseason play. If this guy decides to step, take his foot off the gas, if he decides when to amp it up, whatever the case may be, you defer to his judgment. When you've been to 10 NBA Finals, when you've won four championships, and when we just finished experienced a global pandemic, uh, the likes of which we hadn't seen for a century, and somehow, some way, when we consider the collapse that we witnessed with the Los Angeles Clippers because of them being devoid of leadership and what have you, although it was nice to see uh, Kawhi Leonard and Jimmy Kimmel last night. Bottom line is, is that LeBron James and the Lakers didn't have that problem. And so I don't think there's anything to be worried about with the Lakers, a slow start or anything like that, because they have the greatness of Anthony Davis, who's one of the top three players in the world, and they have the best player in the world who's the best leader in basketball, and that man is LeBron James. I don't think there's anything to be concerned about. I don't know what's happening today, but... For the second straight segment, I, I don't know what's – maybe I have a fever or something. I don't know. I'm coming down with something. I agree with Stephen A. I agree I, – maybe for slightly <laughs> different reasons, but right on. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not worried about the Lakers' slow start at all. Stephen A., let's be honest. The LeBron James teams of the past have often started slow, right? Miami had a slow start at one, one year. Cleveland had some slow starts – because LeBron's figuring out, how do I get this group to the promised land? And in the meantime, he's 100 years old. He has more miles than anyone. 
on his legs, and he has to pace himself. Now, last year, Anthony Davis came on first take and told us he challenged LeBron to set the tone on defense. And I think AD was probably right last year, like with a new group of guys and this superstar combination. It's important for your best player to set that tone. And for a lot of the season, LeBron did play better regular season defense than he had in years. But given his age and his mileage, it's, I think, not uh, responsible even to expect him to play defense, for example, all regular season. And sometimes the other guys on the team, even if AD's setting that example, slack off a little bit too when their leader doesn't do it, although Montrez Harrell plays some defense, some other guys will too. The point is, LeBron knows how to pace himself and knows his body. How do I get to be in the playoffs where if when I need to put the pedal to the metal, I still got something in the tank? He's usually done that in the past. This past season, he basically kept the pedal to the metal all year. But I, I wouldn't even recommend that he does that again. He signed up for multiple years. He needs to pace himself so he's ready to go when they need him most. And if the Lakers get off to a slow start while LeBron's figuring it all out, no big deal because when the lights are brightest, he'll show up. Well, I'm not worried about the Lakers at all. Matter of fact, the only thing I'm worried about is the Lakers coming out and dominating the league because when you look at this roster, in my opinion, this is the best roster on paper that LeBron James has had in the last four years. And no disrespect to last year's championship championship team, but when you look at the additions that Rob Palenka made, I'm looking at this, and, and LeBron can pace himself. He can take games off and do load management because they have weapons. They have guys that could come in and up and get the job done and, and, and deliver in, in, in great fashion. And when I say that, I'm looking at a guy like Dennis Schroeder who's capable in the regular season especially for uh, that is capable of going for 30 plus a night. You got Montrez Harrell, another guy that's capable of giving you 20 a night if LeBron just decides not to play that night. And then you have Anthony Davis, along with Wes Matthews, along with Marcus Saul, along with Taylor Horton Tuck, Tuck, uh, Tucker, who keeps thriving, and even Kyle Kuzma. Although Man, I disagree with his style of play at times, Although I disagree with Kyle Kuzma at times on how he plays the game of basketball, one thing about it, when he gets hot, he gets hot. So with the Lakers roster, job well done by Rob Palenka, I'm worried about them coming out and dominating too early. Oh, I'm sorry, Max, you did. No, right. no, no, I was going to. I, I'm sorry, Max, I thought you was no, going to no, go. I mean, I, yeah, like, go. Listen, Jump in, I'm not worried. I mean, I mean, I'm hey, not worried. But, I'm not but worried Stephen about A. Max, sorrow. Stephen A. Stephen A. And Max, that's how it be. Sometimes y'all get quiet when Big Perk come on here speaking the gospel. Y'all get caught up in my in what I be saying well, well, and loving how I'm delivering this good gospel. Well, and sometimes all, you just well, gotta fall back well, well, and listen. Well, well, yeah, that's well, what it is. First of all, you know better. First of all, you know better. Secondly, respect your elders. <laughs> Thirdly, and more importantly, that is factually incorrect, Kendrick Perkins. I mean, the fact of the matter is you do drop a lot of science, and I love you to death. But there are some things that you say sometimes I'll be wondering about you, bro. I'll be wondering about you sometimes. Yeah, not, most, I, not most, not most, yeah, not all, but, feel, but sometimes, I, yes. I feel sorry for your loss. I feel sorry for your loss because you're not being <laughs> open-minded. Yeah. LeBron James. It doesn't stop, folks. Uh, the four-time NBA champion is also a four-time MVP, a four-time NBA Finals MVP. Winning a fifth NBA championship would tie him with the likes of Magic Johnson and the late, great Kobe Bean Bryant. Max, you're up first. Would a fifth NBA title give LeBron GOAT status? I'm talking MJ, Michael Jordan, his airness GOAT status. No. LeBron's already got the career argument. It's either him or Kareem. And I think for in the pros, in the NBA, considering how LeBron's still playing at his age, it's LeBron. Peak is Jordan. And I don't see where LeBron's going to elevate his peak over Jordan's. When we talk about greatest, guys, I don't think we just mean add up all the win shares by the end of the career and who's worth more wins, right? I don't think that's what we're talking about mainly. Nor do I think it's just a guy who had one season. Oh, my God, he was all world. He was as good as anyone I've ever seen, Bill Walton or something. I don't think that's what we're talking about. We're talking about a guy who's prime, who concentrated 
the highest level of performance over a significant number of years. When they were at their best, like, and how, how long did their best last? That's the best basketball ever played, right? So in baseball, if you said who's the greatest pitcher ever, you have a very good argument for Sandy Koufax. He only had four prime years, but one after another. No one ever did it like that. I think we talk, we, that's really what we're talking about when we say the best who ever did it in sports. And Michael Jordan's prime. Guys, the first time, the first time Jordan played with another all-star was Scottie Pippen. He took the Pistons seven games. Pippen had a migraine in game seven, scored two points in 40 minutes, so they lost. He never didn't win the finals again in under seven games. Understand? Every time you gave, here, Jordan, here's an all-star, he won the finals in under seven games and put up numbers the likes we've never seen, right? And was an all-world defender. He's the greatest of all time. I don't think LeBron can catch him. Well, Max, you just moving the goalposts for your narrative again. You can't just say, come up with that logic and say, this is why he's the greatest of all time. Maybe LeBron James is still going. He's still at his best. Even at the age of 36, he's still at his best. And here's the problem that I have. When we talk about the game of basketball, last time I checked, the game of basketball was a team sport. This is not boxing. This is not golf. This is not tennis. Where rings and championships define your legacy? Yeah, it helps your legacy, but it don't define your greatness. How about the individual accolades? Because you could be on a team that just don't have the pieces, and you could be doing more than your part, which LeBron James has been doing his entire career. And I didn't even want to get into this GOAT debate because I already know you two old haters. I know how y'all act. Oh, no, it's nothing that he could do. Not a damn thing. I'm just waiting for you, Stephen. I can't even see you today because I don't even have my monitor on. Matter of fact, I don't even want to see your face right now. But at the end of the day, I said this again. I said this Smiling before, ear ear. and I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. LeBron James and Michael Jordan are sitting at the same dinner table. Some people like to drink, uh, drink Ciroc. Others like to drink Hennessy. I'm a Hennessy type guy. I'm a Hennessy dude. I'm a Hennessy dude. That's, that's, that's fair enough. And, and listen, stop lying because you always love to see my face. Just stop lying. Stop lying, big boy. Stop lying. That's number one. Number two, you are absolutely right. There's nothing that's going to change my mind. To me, Michael Jordan is the greatest of all time, but him and LeBron James sitting at the same table. LeBron James is on the Mount Rushmore of basketball, one of the top four players in the history of basketball. There is no question about that. And, and, and listen, God forbid I don't say that LeBron is number one. I mean, what the greatest insult in the planet because some of the folks in this camp, that's how they treat it. Him number two instead of number one, what blasphemy are you spewing? But I think it's something to be said about the road that you traveled to get there. I think that the year, the things that my, the LeBron had to endure before he ultimately got to that point psychologically, mentally, emotionally, I think there's something to be said for that. I'm thinking about the scoring championships of Michael Jordan, the NBA championships of Michael Jordan, the killer instinct that was Michael Jordan. Uh, all of those things come into consideration for me. And so when I look at LeBron, it's no disrespect whatsoever. I think he's the greatest in the game today. I think he's the greatest in the history of basketball outside of Michael Jordan. But if I had to take LeBron at his best, and I don't hold up all those championship losses against him, even though he lost six. I don't I don't blame him for losing to the Spurs in 2007. Not I don't all blame him for losing for the Spurs in 2014. I don't blame him for losing to KD I mean, and Golden State. I understand what he was working against. But in the end, all I'm saying is when I take LeBron at his best, and I take Michael Jordan at his best. I would want Michael Jordan every day and twice on Sunday. Only, I mean, over LeBron James. And that is the only person that I would want over LeBron James in the history of basketball. I don't find that to be insulting. Stephen A is right, Perk. I mean, I mean, Bron on, I mean, only Bron, Bron had to go against more Hall of Famers, but carry on, you good. Go ahead, Max. You could talk about. You could talk. Hold you could use that okay, argument. Just, I could use. Let me just, let, I can use. Hold on, Max. I can use the culture of the game today compared to what it was. 
in the 80s and stuff like that. The rough house tactics, the rules, how soft you, it's become you, you, over the years. I can bring that up. We can have that argument another time, KP. We can you do that. Do not, well, I, I, you, you, so you don't, don't want to go there. You do not you don't want to go there. You, you, you do I'm, not want to go there. You don't want to go I'm so you don't sick want to of the competition because argument. I'm telling you, you don't want to you don't want to bring up you don't want to bring up John Hunter and, and Thunder Dan again and LeBron facing KD and, oh, and, and Kawhi. We ain't gonna go there. You right? Talk about you that. right? We ain't gonna go there. You right? I ain't gonna I bring up. That's what I'm talking about. Thunder Dan, you right? That's what I'm talking about. I'm yeah. talking you, about you, basketball I'm in the saying, 80s. I'm talking about basketball in the 80s. Don't act like you don't know. You know exactly what I'm talking about. So you, so There's you a whole bunch of Kendrick so Perkins so with no soft as Cotton Elf Forget about basketball on in the, the 80s. defensive side of the ball. Don't no. start that. I can't. You, Please. It, you don't, need, you don't need to give, game was, I don't need to give Jordan that action. than it was then. You don't. Giannis has two MVPs, zero titles through seven seasons in the NBA. That's the exact place that LeBron James was then at this point in his career. Now we go to number two, LeBron James teammate, uh. Anthony Davis. So the Brow led the Lakers in points and rebounds last season. Davis was a force for the Lakers during last season's run to the championship. He came up clutch by hitting one of the biggest shots of the playoffs, a buzzer beating three point shot to defeat the Nuggets game two of the Western Conference Finals. Stephen A., who would you rather have in the postseason? This one's tough. A.D. or Giannis? A.D. That's not even hard for me uh, because Giannis has to show me he can hit perimeter shots, which he hasn't shown me in the postseason. I know A.D. could do that. And oh, by the way, Max, to piggyback off of uh, KP getting on you just a few seconds ago, Basically, what he's reminding you of is the fact that he and I picked Miami when you picked Milwaukee because you was raving about Chris Middleton when you picked Milwaukee, and obviously that didn't prove to be correct. Now, getting back to my point here, Giannis well, is a man-child in the regular season, but come postseason time, when D I say this all the time, come the postseason, teams get back on defense. They force you to be a half court. One of the reasons why we raved, and KP, you could co-sign this, one of the reasons we raved so much about Showtime with Irvin Magic Johnson, with Worthy on one wing, Byron Scott on another, Cooper trailing, stuff like that, where we used to go off about that and we loved it so much. We didn't just marvel at the Lakers and Magic Johnson because of the fast break. We marveled at the fact that the fast break never left them, no matter what defenses tried to do. Somehow, some way, because of the greatness of Magic Johnson, you could always push the ball up the court. And you were always in a track meet. And that's what you marveled about because that doesn't usually happen. And so as a result of that, let's transition to the modern day age with the Greek freak in Milwaukee. You don't really have a situation with Eric Bledsoe and those boys at the time where you were able to push the ball up the floor the way that you would like to because that's when Giannis is really lethal in the open court. It's not to say that he can't do stuff in the half court, but not to the degree of his danger, of how dangerous he is in the open court. So they come back on, they get back on defense. You become a half court player. And if you don't have a perimeter shot, there's nothing you can do. What makes Anthony Davis so great Inside or out, it doesn't matter. He can play with his back to the basket. He can play face in the basket. He can drive to the hole. Or he can pull up from 17. Or he can pull up from 19 and beyond. It doesn't matter. The arsenal of his offensive attack is better than that of the Greek freak. Plus, he's a rim protector and a shot blocker and a rebounder when he wants to be. Anthony Davis is the real deal. And I would take him over the Greek freak without question. I understand those arguments. Um, he's more well-rounded. Stephen A., you tend to like those kind of players in the playoffs. You like, in order of preference, KD, AD, Giannis, because that's the descending order of, of like, how well-rounded their games are. But sometimes a dude can do certain things so no well that even if they're not as well-rounded, they're more valuable. I had Andre Snellings of ESPN fame, Stephen A., who was also a neural engineer, I believe. He's like, you know, a very, very smart guy and knows the basketball analytics on my radio show, the Max Kellerman Show, 2 p.m. Eastern, by the way, on ESPN Radio and ESPN+. Plus. And he was saying he'd take Giannis. <laughs> he'd take Giannis, and it's not a difficult choice for him. And he said because Giannis, when you look at how he makes his teammates – Gian, like, AD can compile stats, and he's great, no doubt about it, and all the reasons you said about him are, are, are correct. But Giannis can also elevate those around him because he's an exceptional passer. 
with, with court vision because of his handles given his size. No, he can't shoot it like AD, although again, AD's a better shooter than Giannis. Is he a way better shooter than Giannis? He's a better shooter. Giannis is a step below that, but he's not, it's not like you're talking about Ben Simmons. You got to put him in the dunker spot because he can't shoot at all. If you leave him alone, he can knock down a shot. Um, when you look at, at the kind of force Giannis is on a court, Right now, going back to our previous argument, you guys are being heavily influenced by the fact that you just saw AD play with LeBron. If you put Giannis with LeBron, you would say, this dude, it's, it's impossible. Like, just like the Lakers are now, they would not lose anything if you swapped out AD with Giannis. And if push came to shove, I'm taking Giannis. That, that's not true, Max. First of all, to me, LeBron and Giannis both need the ball in their hands to be dominant, meaning that Thank they can't you. play off the ball. Anthony Davis could play off the ball. And, Max, I don't know what analytics, and, and, I, and I've been on your talk, your radio show, and I love coming on there and handing you L's like I'm doing today, but if you're going to sit up here and tell me that it's not night and day between Anthony Davis and Giannis, you're tripping. Anthony Davis' skill set is something that we have never seen before. The closest thing to it sure. was maybe Kevin Garnett, and that's my brother. I played with him. When you look at Anthony Davis, it's more to, to his package than just being able to shoot better than Giannis. He has a better handle than Giannis. He has better post moves. He has the wiggle. And you talk about AD and his, you talk about Giannis and his passing, but AD could drop dimes when he's needed to. He know how to pass out the double team. He know how to drive and kick. Uh, excuse me, in the, in, the, in the NBA Finals and in the bubble last season, did we not see him throwing lob after lob to Dwight Howard and JaVale McGee on big-to-big -big passing he when he was the catching the ball in the pocket pass? Who's the better and passer? AD. AD. Don't get it twisted. Giannis just had better passer than Giannis. I don't think so. More than Anthony Davis. Yes. Oh my God. Giannis just learned how to find He's the corner better. pass Max. this season. And listen, listen. I know we got to. I I know we got to move on, but a couple of things. Number one, uh, Anthony Davis, I believe, is a better passer than Giannis. He definitely is a better ball handler than Giannis. And last but not least, Max, just a little bit of advice because you've been doing radio for years, and I know you know what you're doing because you're a pro. But in terms of ratings, you might not want to have the analytics dudes on. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. The analytics dudes well, don't I mean anything. I, I mean, think, we respect I think, them, I think, but that ain't going to help you in the ratings, bro. Excellent. That ain't going to help you in the ratings. Not